What's up guys, this is Adam here with Power Sports Builds and today we're working on a 1996 SeaDoo XB. Um, what's wrong with this jet ski is um, when we, we're getting a no start condition electrically, um, we're getting no crank to the starter. So what's happening here is when I'm clicking start, we're not hearing the solenoid click, we're not getting any power to the starter motor. So I'm gonna dive in and I'm also, I'm gonna diagnose the electrical issue that's happening with this, but I'm also gonna explain some other common electrical issues and how you can test those as well, if that's an issue you're having. It's always a good idea to start the battery and make sure you have enough power. Test the battery, we're gonna use a multimeter. You always wanna make sure you have enough power coming from your battery before you start tearing into other electrical components and end up wasting your time. We're gonna use a multimeter to test the battery. And we're getting a reading of 12.22 volts, which checks out and is a good reading. We have the electrical box out now. The next thing I recommend doing is following your positive wire from the battery um, to find your electrical box. The positive wire will go straight into this electrical box here as you can see. And what we're going to start with is testing the fuses to make sure all the fuses in conjunction with the starter relay are in good condition. Normally on a car, our fuses would be visible to the eye, but on a jet ski, since the electrical stuff needs to be watertight to protect itself, you have to pop them out. Next, what you're gonna do is put your multimeter on a continuity setting um, to confirm. It usually has a little bit of a like a speaker thing because it makes a noise when you have continuity. So if you touch your leads together and you're getting continuity, you know you're on the right setting. Then you're gonna take your fuse and touch one lead to tab on the top side of it and one lead to the tab on the other side. And if you get a beep here on the top of your fuse or if you don't have little inserts on the top of your fuse, you can pull it out. But if you're getting a beep, you know that fuse will check out. So unfortunately, both of our fuses checked out, so we know that's not the issue. Uh, you always hope it's the easy stuff, but we'll dive into it a little more. Now we're gonna use a test light to test the uh, other electrical components. Find a good ground. I like to use this nut right here. And then we're gonna test the starter relay or the starter solenoid. It's basically a, basically a relay, they do the same thing. So we have our power coming from our battery, this wire here, this is our starter solenoid. And then we have our wire coming from the battery here. So we're gonna check for power here. So we can confirm that when our test light lights up, we're getting power from the battery. And we know, and then the power comes up through these fuses, they all check out, and then it comes into the other side. Now when you turn the key, or hit the electric start button, you should see that, see it light up on the test light. But I'm hitting the start button right now and the test light's not lighting up. So that means electricity is not flowing through our starter solenoid. Now what a lot of people will do when they see their starter solenoid failing, or not getting power through, They'll immediately conclude that it's their starter solenoid, go on eBay, buy one for $30, and wait for it to come in the mail. When you want to make sure that it's your starter solenoid before you move on and pay money to buy one. So to confirm, there's a test you can do. Where you take a screwdriver, you hold the plastic end, and you're going to short across your starter solenoid with your screwdriver. When you have both of these nuts connected with your screwdriver, you're going to hit the start button and nothing's happening. 
if your starter solenoid was the issue, the electrical pad would have jumped the starter solenoid and um, then it would have started to crank over the engine, but that didn't happen, so we know the starter solenoid isn't the issue. When we take our test light here, we're getting power, but we're not getting power, and we know it's not the starter solenoid, so you would say, why aren't we getting power through the starting solenoid? So there's a couple other things we can check, but what we want to look at right here is this guy that comes into the starter solenoid. This is what allows the starter solenoid to make that connection. So we're gonna trace these wires into the front of the ski and see why we're not getting that starter solenoid to bridge over. And there's a couple things it could be. All right, we're now at the front of the ski and we're gonna test a few things up here. This electrical box here can look pretty confusing. You got so many different colors of wires, but when it comes down to it, if you follow the wires you need to look at, it's not that confusing. So we got another fuse here. This is a five amp fuse. We got a 5 amp fuse here and a 15 amp fuse here and we're going to test all of these just to make sure that they're okay. Alright so I pulled all those out and they all checked out unfortunately. Um, I tested them the same way I tested the ones in the front with the continuity. But um, there's, another, there's another common issue that you can have on these jet skis and that is with your key switch. So a common issue you can have with your key switch is when you go to put it on, you're supposed to hear a beep to know that you're getting that connection. Um, and if you're not hearing that beep and you're not getting cranking from the starter, this might be part of the issue. All right, so what you're looking at here it is the back of the key fob and we're gonna pull this thing out. Okay, to pull this key fob out, you're just gonna Work your fingers around it and loosen it up like you would a nut. Um, if yours is pretty stiff, you might need to take a pair of pliers to it. This one wasn't too bad. Some of them can be on there pretty good. All right, we now have our uh, key starter switch removed. Uh, so now we can trace the wires into the electrical box. It's a little hard to tell here, but the one on the left is a white wire, and then in the middle we got a black ground wire, and then on the right we got a black and yellow wire. So we're going to test these. Okay, so what you need to do next is um, we're going to test the black and the black and yellow wires. So you're going to just trace them in, and here's the black and yellow one, and here's the black one, and you just have to trace them in and find them, and then we're going to disconnect them. All right, so we got these guys disconnected here. You just have to pull apart on the switch, or you just gotta pull them apart from this guy. Shouldn't be too hard. And then you take your multimeter, put it on an ohm setting. For C2, it gives you an ohm reading. So you put a, one test probe in here and one test probe in there with your multimeter on an ohm setting, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, for C2, you look up in your manufacturer's um, service manual, and it'll give you the ohm reading that you're supposed to see and this will tell you if your safety switch is good. So for c with the cap on, so the key on the, the switch, or your reading should be close to zero with the cap on, and then with the cap off, you should have an open circuit. You shouldn't see any ohms. So we're gonna test that. Okay, we got our multimeter set to ohms here, and it's reading zero ohms, which is what it should be. Um, and then you just take your probes, and put one in one side and one in the other, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we got our probes inserted into the wires and our cap is off and we are getting an ohm reading. So what this tells us is that our starter switch is bad because we were supposed to get an open circuit, which would just give us an OL on the multimeter. All right, now just to confirm our test and to show you guys to prove to you guys that it is that starter switch, um, you're gonna take, I wired in a uh, the same thing off of the same year jet ski, um, and just to test it, because I know this one works. Okay, so now as you can see, when we put the key onto the thing, we get um, a recognition from our gauges here that the key is in. Okay, now that we have uh, confirmed our issue, 
and solved it. We're gonna test this solenoid and see if it, we get voltage here and see if we're gonna get voltage here when we go ahead. Hit the stop start button. All right, so we are in fact getting power to the other side of this solenoid. It's not gonna crank over the engine just because we have a bad starter on this ski. All right, thank you guys for watching this video. Um, we were able to cover some of the basic electrical issues that go wrong on these things. Um, I've also done a carb rebuild on this guy. Um, I'm gonna do a lot more videos on these skis just to show you guys how they work and the process of me restoring them and getting them up running. So if you guys like jet skis and wanna watch more of that, definitely subscribe to the channel.